Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here, and all eyes are on the weekend. It's going to be wet, but here's the thing. I hate using the word washout sometimes because it rarely rains the entire day, but Saturday, it's kind of looking like that. Sunday, probably more scattered. There's probably going to be breaks, but I'm going to show you why it's probably going to come at us more in waves. It'll feel like it's rained all day even though it really hasn't. Here's the setup. So across the southeast feels pretty good today. Actually have a little bit of a northeast wind that's helping us feel cooler. It's still above average humidity and temperature wise, but compared to the last couple of days feels pretty good. You can see Hurricane Earl off the east coast. Thank goodness that's going to stay away from us, but you can see the player for the weekend. There it is down to our south there. What's going on here is we've got two things going on. We've got an upper low or mid-level low here, a surface low over Florida that's going to start spreading moisture north really tomorrow, but then into Saturday and Sunday. At the same time, to the north, we've got high pressure over New England. Now what that does, the clockwise flow around that provides a northeast wind. You throw in the combination of these two, it allows for air to be lifted over the Carolinas and really squeeze out all of this tropical moisture, which will be heading our way. In fact, there's gonna be a whole bunch of tropical moisture heading our way. This is that precipitable water we talk about often. You could see as we go through time this weekend, those kind of pink and salmon shades start moving north. That's precipitable water that's two to three inches. And if we go into Saturday, you could see all of that moisture moving into the Carolinas. I mean, that is saturated. That's Saturday night into Sunday morning. We go into Sunday afternoon. This is right around game time for the Panthers. That's a lot of moisture. Look at the levels of precipitation possible as that moves in. So we're gonna have the moisture in place. It's just a matter of where the lines of showers and storms set up and how much we squeeze out. Um, going into Saturday. So let's kind of break down uh, what I think is going to happen over the next 24 hours. The excessive rainfall outlook, this is for today. Tomorrow, you can see we're still kind of on the edge, but look what happens on Saturday. Most of our region is going to be in the medium risk, slight risk in, on here, 15% chance of flash flooding within 25 miles. I think this could be upgraded to moderate. And even on Sunday, I do think we'll see this again. So two days of potential flash flooding here in the Carolinas. Now the satellite image kind of shows that upper low over Louisiana right now. You can see it's like a big cog or a gear. Now when this gear forms in the atmosphere, it basically starts pushing moisture north and east. The problem is there's nothing to kick this thing out of here because we've got some blocking going on, which is gonna allow this to kind of meander and just drift to the north over the weekend into early next week. So that's why we're gonna have such a wet pattern for not only just Saturday, Sunday, but maybe even into Monday and Tuesday until all of this mess kind of moves out of the region. So let's start breaking down some of the future casts here on what's gonna happen over the next uh, you know three or four days and kind of pinpoint when the worst will happen and maybe when there might be some breaks over the weekend. First things first, we'll look at the short range modeling first to kind of get us through the first 60 hours of this and then we'll look long range on some of the, the global models. So we'll go through today relatively dry. I mean, I can't rule out a stray shower. Even on Friday, might see an isolated shower, but for the most part, it's gonna be dry um, as we go through today and tomorrow. We'll go into tomorrow afternoon and you can see the rain developing to our Southwest, relatively dry over North Carolina, but some showers will start to move into South Carolina. Friday night, um, maybe a little bit of a lull in the activity as things kind of build. You can see the upper low. This is 10 p.m. Friday night, so high school football could be relatively dry, fingers crossed. But as we go into early Saturday morning, this is 3 o'clock in the morning, you can see this band. And this band is going to be key. Where does this band of really heavy rain? It's a line of showers and some embedded thunderstorms moving northwest um, into the Carolinas. Now, there's going to be embedded thunder in here, but there's not going to be a ton of lightning or thunderstorms per se because of the extensive cloud cover and rainfall, it's likely gonna be more just rain, but there could be lightning strikes in there because there's enough lift. So I don't wanna rule out lightning completely, but don't think of the big lightning storms we get in the, in the uh, summertime. This is more just a couple rumbles of thunder here and there, enough that it could cause some delays. So this is early on, on Saturday morning, obviously gonna be raining. Um, we go into the afternoon, you can see the rain is on and off. Sure, there's some breaks here and there, but there's waves of rain, heavier rain in the mountains, some near the coast. We go into the afternoon um, at two o'clock. This is where the short range guidance stops. So you see that it may not be raining the entire time, but what's more likely is there'll be pockets of heavy rain. And then in between, there's probably drizzle mist and clouds. So that's what I mean. It probably won't rain the whole time, but it might feel like it just because it's so gray, gloomy and damp the entire time. So this is through two o'clock Saturday. Let's go further into the future. We got to look at some longer range guidance here. 
All right, because we're looking further into the future, we've got to use a, a, a less resolute model here. So lower resolution and the, you'll see the times jump every three hours. So we don't get hour to hour data. But just to give you an idea, we'll go through today. Uh, we'll go into tomorrow. Um, very similar. You see the bands of rain setting up. We'll go into Saturday, um, Saturday morning, you know, pretty consistent. Uh, most of the guidance shows a band of rain over us, but it's kind of scattered at times. Um, into the afternoon, some heavy rain. We'll go into, this is Saturday night. So Saturday night to me looks to be the heaviest. So that's when I think the combination of all the moisture and lift come together. You see the heavy rain over us. So Saturday night, we go into Sunday morning, two o'clock in the morning, heavy rain over us. You wake up Sunday morning, it's game day. Panthers, you know, are playing. Here's why Sunday probably not as bad. There's, there's definitely rain. Don't get me wrong. It's going to rain. It's just a matter of it's going to rain the whole time or be broken up. And I think it's going to be broken up in waves. So you can see we have some bands of showers um, and, you know, coarsely, maybe some here, maybe a lull, then some more here, some more here, there. And these will all be moving in this direction. So over time, you'll see waves of rain move through. So by two o'clock kickoff, there'll be rain around. The good news is this doesn't look to be thunderstorms. This looks to be just good old fashioned rain. So lightning delay is probably not as likely. It's just going to be kind of miserable for tailgating. And at the game, you're going to see a passing downpour. In fact, things could improve or become more scattered, let's call it, as we go into Sunday afternoon. The heaviest rain will probably be early in the game. And as the game goes on, the rain could let up a little bit. So think more drizzle, mist, light rain. That's kind of persistent, more so than tremendous downpours occurring during the game. The downpours will likely happen Saturday night into Sunday morning and then push off to the north and east. So, you know, let's look at the rainfall amounts. You know, we talked a little bit about this yesterday. Um, as we go through time, we'll go into Saturday. You can see the rain coming up. I'm going to stop this on Monday morning right around, uh, you know, seven o'clock in the morning. The totals over the area are generally one to three inches, but there could be localized heavier amounts. And I fully expect at some point we're going to see a flash flood watch issued for parts of the area, probably as soon as tomorrow, maybe even later tonight. Of course, I will continue to post updates. The thing I would tell you for advice for the weekend, plan for rain and hope it's more scattered, but don't think it's going to be a complete washout the entire time, just that it's going to rain at some point. The longer you spend outside, the higher the chances you're going to get wet at some point over the weekend, both Saturday and Sunday.